all right welcome back to another video so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started with the actual next js application so in case you are wondering Next.js is a web framework that you use react to build your web components but the only difference between actual using a regular create react app you actually run the Next.js app on the server side and it allows you to perform pre-rendering such as server-side rendering or static site generation or you can do both okay now if you aren't familiar with Next.js I have a full tutorial playlist that you can go ahead and watch it's a very easy framework to use the only thing that you need to understand is the concept of pre-rendering in my opinion those are the most important things and if you can understand those basics you're going to be golden when it comes to using Next.js but let's go ahead and get started so to get started with Next.js, we're going to create a Next project. So let me just zoom in a little bit on my terminal. So I'll type yarn creates. You can also use npx if you want, but I prefer yarn. So the command that I'm using, yarn create next hyphen app, you can just do npx create next app or next hyphen app. And then uh, what we're going to do is I'll set the template to TypeScript. So that's just hyphen hyphen TypeScript. Okay, hit enter. And now it's going to prompt us for the project name. So I'll just call this uh, next dashboard. Uh, and I'll call this client. Yeah, next dashboard client for the front end. It feels weird calling a next app a front end because we know that it runs on the server side. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's not a huge deal. All right, so it's going to be... It's going to configure the project very fast for us. It shouldn't take too long. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and uh, set everything up in our project. And I'll kind of just like, you know, uh, do a quick overview of it because I don't want to spend too much time just setting up the files and setting up the, the file structure. All right. So we have the project created. So let's just go to next dashboard client and let's open up Visual Studio Code. So you're going to see that this is what we get. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay. So like I said, definitely check out the Next.js uh, tutorial playlist. I go through all of the basics. I go through the files, the file structure. It's You should definitely check it out. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just set up our project. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first run the app just to show you what you should be seeing by default. So... You're going to see that it runs very fast. So let me just open up my tab and you can see that right over here, we are on the home page. Okay. So let me go ahead. And the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to create a source folder because I like to put everything inside a source folder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the pages folder. I'm just zooming a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we'll move this pages folder inside the source folder and you could do that. And it will work just fine. It's going to not do that because I have the app running. Let me just terminate the process. Okay. So we just move the source or we move the pages folder inside source. I'm also going to move styles inside source as well. Uh, we'll leave public alone. We shouldn't really worry about that. That's fine. Just leaving it right over there. This is where you can put like public assets and stuff. So if you have like images that don't need to be, you know, served from another URL, and they just like stay local. You could just put that inside this folder over here. Okay. Uh, and I think that'll be pretty much it in terms of these folders. We'll definitely create other folders too. So for example, I'm going to create a folder for components. Okay. And then I'll likely have to create another one later for some other stuff like utilities, such as uh, types and hooks and, you know, like just a file for all of our API calls. So what I'll do is I think I'll create a folder called utils and I'll move the styles inside here and I'll create a folder or not folder, but I'll probably just create a, uh, yeah, I'll create a folder called types for all of our types. So this is where we'll put our, uh, our custom types. Um, and I think maybe we'll have like another folder for constants and API uh, function calls as well but we'll we'll worry about that when we actually need those things okay because i don't want to overwhelm you all too much okay so what's next now uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to install sas okay and now i personally prefer using sas because i'm 
very used to using styled components and styled components supports SAS out of the box and it's very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. So I'll do yarn add SAS. So I would highly recommend you install SAS too because it's just basically a superset of CSS, kind of like how TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. And so a lot of stuff that, so everything that you write, like every CSS that you write inside an SCSS file or SAS file, it's going to be valid. Okay, it's just that there are some extra additional things that we'll be able to do with SAS. And you'll notice them uh, as we go through the video. So definitely install SAS. Okay, so now that we have installed SAS, we can actually use uh, SCSS files. So I can actually rename everything to SCSS. So before I do that, um, let me go ahead and remove all of the stuff inside the home page because we're not going to be needing any of this okay we're actually going to have our own custom home page later which is just going to have the login button that's that's really all it's going to have okay so let me just get rid of that and i'll just call this home page for now until we you know design the login page but once we have that we can go back here and then fix that so now that i've cleared up everything here I'm going to delete the home.module.css because this is just the CSS module, the CSS module file for the home page. And we're not going to be using that because we just don't need it. So we're going to delete that. We'll leave the globals.css file alone. Okay, because this is where we're going to have all of our global CSS. Um, and this global, this globals CSS file actually gets uh, imported inside this underscore app.tsx file. So you can think of this underscore app.tsx file like the main entry point to the application, kind of like how in a regular create react app uh, application, you have the app.tsx file, which is like the main component that gets imported into the index.tsx and then it gets uh, injected into, it gets mounted onto the root element, the root, the div with the uh, ID of root. Okay, so uh, inside here is where we have the globals uh so where we have the globals css file we're gonna actually have to fix this uh import because we moved the styles inside utils so we have to actually do let me fix the path real quick so remember correctly we have to go out one go inside utils go inside styles okay and we're going to change to dot scss so let's fix that okay so now let me go back and run the application real quick. If I refresh, you should be seeing a blank page or not blank page, but you should see just it says home page. And if I go to globals.css, if I were to change the background color to a dark color, you can see that the changes reflect that and that shows that our SCSS file uh, is in fact working and the globals is, is are being picked up all the globals also being picked up okay so um that's pretty much it for that part so let's go ahead and configure uh, some default styles and then we'll configure a font and then once we configure the font uh we should be good to go we can start implementing all of our pages okay so this is just all basic setup so what i'll do is i'm going to go ahead and set the height. So I'm gonna delete that background color property because I'm gonna set that somewhere else. I'm gonna set the height to 100%. Okay, uh, I'll set the text color uh, to be a white color. And then I'm gonna go over to here and I'm going to reference the underscore underscore next ID. And I'm going to set the height of that to 100. So this is actually equivalent to if you have create react app and if you have the root uh, ID for the main div. Uh, Next also has the main div that has an ID with underscore underscore next. Okay, so we're just going to set the height of that to 100% so that way we have a full full page. Okay, and um. Let's see what else. I'm gonna go ahead and set a class. So this is gonna be a global class. So anywhere in our project, we can actually use this 
uh, we can actually reference this class name. With uh, Next.js or CSS, uh, basically the way that it works is with globals, you can reference the class name anywhere you want. And then you also have something called CSS modules, which you can just scope the CSS down to component level. And you'll see many examples of that later on in the video. So for this page class, I'm just going to set the height to 100%. The background color will be 1D, 1D, 1D. And then we'll set the padding to the pixels. And uh, it already came with this uh, box sizing border box that applies to all elements. So we don't have to worry about applying to anywhere else. Okay. So, and that just comes from the, uh, the scaffold of our next year's project. That was already there already. All right, so the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to bring in a Google font. In order to do that, we're going to need to uh, create a custom document. So basically, it just uh, overrides um, the the current document, and it basically allows you to uh, put in your you know custom you know CSS that might come from a URL. Like it might be hosted somewhere, so you might want to inject that into the head tags. So you can do that. Uh, if you want to add, you know, uh, metadata, um, if you want to add a bunch of other, you know, um, like descriptions inside the header tags, if you want to add a custom title tag, you would do that all in the custom document. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right over to the pages folder and I'm going to create a new file called underscore document dot TSX. Okay. And uh, I, I'm actually just going to go ahead and just copy and paste this because uh, this is something that you can just find on the documentation and the structure is really just going to be the same. So there's no point for me to just, you know, type all this out and, you know, explain every single thing because it's just really straightforward. But if you want to learn more about, you know, what exactly this does, just go to the Next.js documentation and read. Let me just actually show you where to find that real quick. So right over here, if you go to the nextjs.org website, you go to docs and you search for custom document. Okay, just search for custom document and you'll find it. And you'll see that it explains literally what exactly it does. And you can literally just copy and paste the code. Okay, it's ridiculously straightforward. Okay, you can use get initial props. Okay, you can call this render method and then you can just return a custom HTML document. Okay, and the tags are pretty straightforward. HTML, okay, header tag the body tag, the main tag, and the next script, okay? The only thing that we're only doing that's different is we're just adding the Google font, okay? And you can just grab this Google font from fonts.google.com. It's very easy. Okay, the font that I'm going to use is DM Sans, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So when you have that inside this pages folder as underscore document.tsx, it'll override it for you. If you were to open up the elements tab in your browser, you should be able to see the fonts right over here in the head tag. It's almost as if you were manually putting it in there yourself. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. If I remove it, we won't see it anymore. Okay, so again, you can add a bunch of stuff here. You can even change the title of, you can even change the title here if you want to. Hello, I think, yeah, I think uh, Next.js might have its own title component that you can use, I'm not sure. But you can see that up top over here, it gets the title gets changed up top there. And you can see it right over here. I think next might have its own title component. I'm not too sure. I don't think I don't think so. So you can just use this just fine. Um, but it does recommend, yeah, it does recommend you use titles at the page level. Okay. So I figured there was something that they did have a custom uh component for that. But anyways, let's move on. All right, so now that uh we have done that. And let me actually just do this. I'm just going to go into this home page and let me just set the class name to page just so you, just so you can see that the CSS is going to be applied to our page. So you can see that right now. Uh, let me just close this tab over here. You can see that now we have our uh, CSS applied to this home page. Okay. And uh, let me actually just change the font real quick. So let me just uh, change it to dm sans and i'm not sure i can't really tell to be honest with you because a lot of these fonts just really look the same so sometimes it's very hard to tell so let me just see 
Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, it looks really similar to me. But anyways, we got the font in. And again, you can use whatever font you want. Okay. Uh, and I think that's pretty much going to be most of the changes that we're going to be making. Um, so I just wanted to get a basic... Uh, I just wanted to you know, set up all of the base uh, structures of our application. Okay. Seems like we have most of the things set up already. So what we're going to do in the next video is we'll just set up the home page. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do something basic. It's going to be very similar to the uh, original dashboard series that we had where we just create like a button. They click on it and it's just going to uh, it's just going to redirect them to the, uh, the Discord platform, which is where they will click authorize and it'll redirect them back to our web page once they have successfully authorized. OK, and then after that, we'll set up the menu page. And we'll set up the Azure page and, it, you know, it'll be pretty straightforward from there. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.